So last week I was in Audi and I stumbled upon a monitor from a supermarket that usually sells a lot of groceries. And I looked at the price tag and I saw it was 200 Australian dollars, which would be about 130 US dollars. And then I looked at the refresh rate and I saw it was a 280 Hertz monitor. And my curiosity peaked. I just had to buy this monitor and bring it back and start testing it because it is undoubtedly the cheapest monitor I can get here in Australia with such a high refresh rate. Now, if I look in America, Amazon.com, for example, the cheapest monitor I can get there is about 130 US dollars on sale right now. But it's a 240 hertz monitor, not a 280 hertz monitor. So in today's video, we are going to test out how much value you can get out of this monitor and also if it's an indicator of things to come in terms of cheaper tech products, especially monitors. Let's get straight into it after today's video sponsor. Never pay full price for Windows 10 or 11 again. With today's video sponsor, SED Keys, you can get activated for as little as $15 using that coupon, BFTYC. Links in the description below. So unboxing this thing, so far so good. You get a DisplayPort cable, power cable, included stand and a monitor with a five star energy rating or five and a half stars. We'll put that to the test later, but let's quickly whip this thing up and get our first impressions. So booting up this monitor for the first time, I've noticed some things are actually off with this monitor. The first being, of course, is the refresh rate. In Windows, we're only getting 240 hertz, when this says on the box, clearly 280 hertz. So that means in this OSD here, the on-screen display on the monitor itself, there must be a setting here to turn on the 280 hertz. And that's what we've stumbled onto here in game settings. Overclock, we are going to turn this on and then check if our 280 hertz is now unlockable. And so there it is, it comes up as an option from 240 hertz to 280 hertz. The next thing is I'm noticing the colors are a little bit off. Now in the game settings here, we've just got the game mode, the overdrive, which has got five different levels. We'll leave that alone for now. And then they've got adaptive sync, which is on by default, which is a good thing if you want the best experience. So we got rid of this off colors on the monitor by turning off this HDR setting here, which was on auto by default. Now, if you're on Windows 10, I do recommend turning this off as Windows 10 does get a little bit iffy with HDR. Windows 11, there is a much better HDR support, except the problem with Windows 11 is Windows 11. It's just, I've had so many problems with that OS that I've gone back to Windows 10, been using it now for quite a while, over half a year, and I haven't had any problems. So. When it comes to monitors on Windows 10, I do recommend just keeping HDR off. It's gonna be a better experience overall. Though brightness, contrast, these settings out of the box, the brightness setting isn't turned up to the max, which is a good thing to see. It means you've got a bit of headroom there. And the contrast settings, they can go higher if you want them to for a little bit more edge. But I find out of the box, this is actually looking like it's a pretty good experience straight away just for someone who wants to enjoy games despite you having to turn on the overclocking settings and also turn off the HDR. But what I'm gonna do right now is get into some games to check out response times, check out input latency, and just see what kind of experience I can get out of this monitor because there's generally three tests that I like to do, and that's play MOBAs, which I'm they're my most played genre. I actually really enjoy Dota 2, for example. Then there's FPS, which would be for the most serious of PC gamers. Then of course, I'm gonna play a newer title just to see how good the colors and the immersion is with the monitor itself. So let's get the testing underway. So with all the testing now finished, I can give you guys a comprehensive list of all the positives and negatives with a monitor like this. So straight away starting out, the 280 hertz is more or less a fad. It doesn't really work properly. And then I realized just the poor translation on the monitor itself meant that it actually turns itself off from 280 hertz after 30 minutes, basically because it is a feature that would otherwise overheat the monitor, so you can't reliably use 280 hertz. You can only use it essentially in 30 minute burst times, 
And so basically all the testing that we're gonna show you from here on in is 240 Hertz. But that being said, the response times at these levels with an overdrive setting of level four makes it so that the response times are around three to four milliseconds, which on a 240 Hertz monitor, you would want roughly under four milliseconds for the response times if you can, because having higher than that can implement two or more frames in the same frame. Essentially, that would make it just a blur fest and unusable in my opinion. So having these response times is good to see, coupled in with surprisingly what is on this monitor and what I researched, a VA panel. Now the total input latency is around, I would guesstimate two to five milliseconds based on the fastest draw that we saw here of nine milliseconds. Compare that to the best I've seen, which was on the Philips monitor I tested last year that virtually has zero milliseconds of input latency. So the stats, if you are a raw gamer, do look pretty good, especially at the price point of this monitor. Now there also is overdrive level three, two and one. The overdrive level three did slightly reduce the response time, still in the higher four millisecond response time level, but even on the max overdrive setting, I didn't notice any visible overshoot that would make your gaming experience poor. There's also the option to turn on strobing, which for this monitor in particular, it will enable two milliseconds of backlight on and then two milliseconds of it turned off. And so this can help some people have better perceived response times. In my case, I actually have to turn it off after 10 minutes of gaming because it does make me feel quite nauseous. So your mileage may vary. However, to turn this setting on, you do unfortunately then have to disable FreeSync, so you will lose your adaptive sync technology, which is why I'd rather personally, if I was using this monitor as a main gaming monitor, I would just leave it on overdrive level four on somewhere in between 80 and 100 brightness. Now, speaking of the brightness, this is actually a good and bad point on the monitor. The nits of brightness level here is the maximum of 300 on average across the monitor. If you've got the strobing turned on, it's around 160. However, the center of the monitor is the brightest spot going up to around 360 nits versus the rest of the monitor of 300. For me personally, it did not make it so it was a bad game experience. However, it is some of the worst numbers I've seen in terms of brightness uniformity. However, moving from this bad news into even more bad news is the color calibration out of the box. This is some of the worst calibration, is what they call it, I've seen on a monitor to date. In fact, it was so big that you'll even notice the differences just from me clicking before and after after I calibrated it with a professional device. So basically, if you want to use this for video editing, I would definitely get it calibrated if some of your friends or someone has a calibration device to do that. Because out of the box, I was just so surprised on the inaccuracies to the point where, for instance, natural reds actually turn out orange in this comparison. So with all that data now out of the way, it's time to give you guys a conclusion on this budget Lenovo Legion monitor that I bought from Audi. And ultimately it is a really impressive monitor for the money. And I think the value here is really good and it's the most important thing when looking at a budget monitor. This monitor brings in high refresh rates, even though the 280 Hertz is more or less a gimmick, but it does give you fast response times low input latency coupled in with also that VA panel, which was surprisingly really good for a VA panel where they usually have much worse response times. So that can lead to a blurry experience. This actually wasn't a blurry experience and that VA panel itself does carry the benefit of having a more contrasty and saturated look. So outside of competitive MOBAs and FPS, you're actually gonna get a really immersive experience in my opinion. Though one more thing on the monitor itself with the OSD, they've got the dark boost setting which I do actually like on some monitors, but in particular on this monitor is just essentially a gamma booster. It just boosts all the levels across the monitor uniformly. So you're just gonna get this blown out image as opposed to some monitors with their dark boost features, just boost the shadows. So summing this one up, great monitor for gaming. However, if you wanna use it for color accuracy or double down as a video editing or photo editing monitor, I would definitely look elsewhere, unless of course, as we said before, you can get access to a professional device to calibrate this monitor. Though, the specs, the value for gamers, it's definitely there. And also the monitor's build quality is pretty solid with a four-way adjustable stand included makes really no noise, it doesn't feel cheap. That is a good thing too. But the speakers on board, I could swear they just caused my ears to ring because the distortion is that bad. So I would definitely look at not using the onboard monitor speakers 
and getting either a separated pair of speakers or just using your favorite headphones. But overall, this monitor did impress me, especially for the dollar, and it didn't require any proprietary software installs from Lenovo themselves. It just worked out of the box and it does a good job of that. Anyhow guys, hope you enjoyed a look at a budget monitor that I picked up from Audi and it did a really good job, just like the last one that I picked up years ago when I saw them on sale at Audi. So it's always good to get a bargain and this one did end up being a solid bargain in the end. Hope you enjoyed the video and if you did, then be sure to hit that like button. And if you stayed this far, then you know what to do and I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Also, let us know your thoughts on budget 1080p gaming monitors like this. Love reading your thoughts and opinions. I'll see you next time. Peace out for now. Bye.